Guys, welcome back to my October horror movie reviews. And I thought I'd do one more review. And this is a movie that's very close to home for me. It's the 1987 Australian horror mystery thriller, Frenchman's Farm. And this is directed by Ron Way and stars Tracy Dench, David Wren, Norman Kay, John Mellian, Ray Barrett, Andrew Blackman, and Phil Brock as the Frenchman. And it's very close to home for me because it was filmed in my home state of Queensland, Australia. And it's also a film that's become sort of a staple horror movie that we watch in my family every couple of years. And we've had this film on VHS since the early 90s. So I've seen this numerous times. And I don't find it particularly scary, but my mother and sisters find this movie frightening. And frightening for the sole purpose that they can't stand the sight of the Frenchman's face. So, sorry, Phil Brock, your face is frightening. And if you're thinking, I haven't heard of this movie, it's probably because this is a low-budget Australian horror movie. So I don't know how big its release was. But what I do know is that when I wanted to upgrade from a VHS to a DVD a couple of years ago, it wasn't an easy film to find, especially in Australia. Being an Australian film, I had to order this from America. And I got this DVD, which I know you can find on Amazon. And uh, I'll get into this later on in the video, but it leaves a lot to the imagination. So without further ado, let's check it out. Frenchman's Farm takes place in the 1980s, and Australian law student Jackie, played by Tracy Tench, is making her way to Brisbane through the southeast Queensland bushland. Mysteriously, her car dies on her travels through the town of Harrisville, and she finds herself transported back in time to the 1940s. Confused and stranded, she strays into a nearby farm, Frenchman's Farm, where she witnesses a murder by beheading. In a state of shock, she returns to her car, but finds herself pursued by the murderer, played by Phil Brock. Mysteriously, her car starts again, and she finds herself transported back to the present and to safety. Jackie immediately alerts the police and confides in her boyfriend, Barry, played by David Rain, a fellow law student and musician. The police, however, don't discover a body or signs of a crime, and Barry believes she saw a mirage due to sunstroke. Positive she witnessed something, Jackie visits the state library and uncovers records of a murder that occurred on the farm 40 years ago, exactly as she witnessed it. However, the person they charged, a Mr. Arthur Hatcher, was not the person she witnessed enact the crime. Driven to prove she hasn't lost her mind and better explain her inexplicable experience, Jackie, accompanied by Barry, travel back to Harrisville and begin to investigate. In Harrisville, they meet the town vicar, played by Norman Kay, who tells them the story of the Hatcher family, who used to own Frenchman's farm, and the legend about the ghost John Hatcher, who haunts it. The Hatchers were a strange lot. Have you heard about the Hatcher ghost? No. No, oh, we haven't. Yes, it's quite a legend in these parts. They say it's John Hatcher. He and his manservant were drowned in the first flood ever recorded here. When they found the manservant's body, his head was missing. It was never explained, and nor did they ever find Hatcher's body. Ah, but his soul goes marching on. Well, for more than a century, it would seem. There have been many sightings reported. Through further digging, they also discovered that John Hatcher was an officer in the army of Napoleon and was entrusted with a pile of Napoleon's gold. And his haunting of Frenchman's farm is in relation to protecting his treasure that still remains dormant on the land somewhere. Meanwhile, in a side plot in Brisbane City, the police have been alerted to Jackie and Barry's interest in the Hatcher murder case, which in the past has caused some supernatural problems for the police in its inability to be input into their computer logs and unexplainable French data appearing and disappearing on their monitors. Here we also discover there have been seven mysterious murders revolving around Frenchman's farm over the decades with all the victims losing their heads. None of this smells good. In fact, a scent of sweet lavender always rears its head when the mention of John Hatcher or his gold is on the tongue. And in one way or another, Jackie and Barry get a little too deep into their investigation into the story of John Hatcher and his treasure and find themselves becoming another statistic of the Frenchmen's.
So what you quickly recognize about Frenchman's Farm is that it's a slow burner. It does have sort of your typical horror tropes and the likes of jump scares, but it really tries to focus on maintaining this sort of creepy vibe where the Frenchman pops up here and there and he's got this sort of creepy harpsichord theme song. And you have to appreciate that he's got unique murder weapon in the likes of a grub hoe because you get too many horror movie killers where they got a knife, they got a hook or they got an axe. And that makes Frenchman's Farm sort of unique. He's got a grub hoe that makes it stand out on its own. And I appreciate that. That gets a seal of freshness. And if you haven't noticed already, or you didn't hear me earlier, this is set in the 80s and man, does it look it. I mean, with the fashion, with the hair, and in your typical 80s movie, the boyfriend is in a band and man, is that music bad. So putting that aside, there is one negative of this film in the likes of the wasted time travel plot device at the beginning. It makes no sense other than to drive the narrative of the story. It happens and then it never happens again. They could have found a better way of doing it. And if I'm talking about negatives, I said I'd bring it back up. Oh, man, I don't know where they went wrong with this one. They, I, it's the worst conversion to DVD I think I've ever seen. I mean, if you've seen Aliens vs Predator Requiem and went, God, I can't see a thing in this. That was intentional. This conversion to DVD, I mean, the VHS looks better than this. This is so dark. I've had up the exposure for all the clips that you've seen in this video, but here they are side by side. Look at that, look at that. That is so bad. And there's one scene in a crypt, and I mean, it's already dark down there, but they cut to a shot of the boyfriend and it's just pitch black. Like, it actually gets quite funny. So guys, it's not the best film out there and I'd probably struggle to call it a horror movie as it's more of a mystery film, but it does have one mean ghost in it. So guys, it still gets a thumbs up from me. And if you're intrigued and can locate it, let me know what you think. And is my family the only one that finds the Frenchman's face creepy? As always guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Paddy McManus and press that subscribe button below to support me. Wow!